Watch Flow has just announced one of its biggest updates ever. It involves the agent step, the voice calling function, as well as a bunch of other stuff such as credits. So let's actually dig deep into what those features are and what you should be changing as a developer. Okay, so let's jump into it. So basically what happened was there was a quite a big patch. Um, it's basically called the Winter Voice Flow Winter Release event. And I was there yesterday and there's a couple of things that we should pay attention to as voice flow developers. And um, just there's a few changes that's quite important actually. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through it. And again, if you want the full dive in, uh, you can. they probably will release the YouTube video by the time this video got released. So I recommend you watch them as well, but I'm gonna link it in the description as well. But for now, let me just kind of briefly, briefly summarize what happened. First thing is the agent step. I, I think it needs no introduction, the agent step, right? So right now, if you go to voice flow and if you just literally click on the agent, you can have the agent step, right? And within the agent step right now, you can just write one big prompt, right? Um, that's kind of instruct the um, agent what to do. It basically have a essentially kind of function calling to that it's allowed to do. Essentially, given these instructions, it's able to decide, okay, when should I actually activate um, a specific function? For example, this function is getting the current date of the user's like day, essentially, right? So it's nothing new. The agency has been here for a while now, but what they've added right now is that there's two things. The first thing is prompts. So I think we can both agree, like when you write prompts like this, which is huge and big, right? So if you go back to the agent tab, and if you don't know how to kind of build this kind of agents, um, I've I've deep dive into the agents tab in one of my videos, so you can just link it in. I you can just follow the link in the description. But essentially, you need to write a very detailed instructions to the agent of what it should be doing, right? So for example, it should have objective. What's your objective? Who you are? You are Casey, a sales assistant that submit home renovation, right? A persona. It needs to have instructions, right? And it needs to have example dialogue. So an example script of what the actual conversation should be, etc. right? And there's a bunch of different things that you need to kind of include in the instructions. And it's so easy to kind of miss out on kind of details. Of course, you can go back and forth, right? So you can write the prompt, test it out, and rewrite the prompt, right? But like, if you're kind of like a beginner, you kind of, it's kind of hard to just kind of from a blank piece of paper to come up with this kind of prompt. Of course, you can ask like GBT or Claude to kind of help you with the prompt, right? But basically what they've done is they now have a prompt generation tool, which means that that's gonna come soon. So basically what happened is that there should be like a prompt generation tool here where it you just need to type in, hey, I want to write a prompt for a sales assistant at Summit House Renovations. Then it will automatically generate a big prompt that you can in, immediately just out of the box, copy paste and test it immediately, right? So of course this won't be the best prompt on the planet. Um, obviously you need to go back and revise it a bunch, but it gives you a starting point, right? So it kind of makes this prototyping much easier. Second thing, tools. So tools is what you can do is you can do something like API call. Um, so what I mean by that is right now or before before yesterday, um, the only thing that you can see here is the function, right? But now to make it easier for you to connect to something like made.com or NA10 or other external tools, now you can just click on the two types and you can go to API call. When you click on it, you can create something called an API tool. So now you can literally just input variables. So for example, I want to capture the name, for example, and then you want to send it to some sort of make.com, then you can just input your make.com like webhook here of your headers, parameters, basically how you would normally do like APIs within voice flow anyway, but now you can actually do it within the agent step without writing function because Functions are great, but then you need to kind of know a little bit of code um, beforehand. And if you're not too familiar with coding or you're not too comfortable with coding, then it's kind of hard, right? I mean, like relatively hard. So you would need that kind of like, but now you can just literally have this API too, and it makes the whole thing way easier. Third thing, integration. What I mean by that is that there's two parts. So basically they start using MCP. If you don't know what MCP is, it's basically stands for Monday Context Protocol. It's a way for kind of 
um, service that has MCV to kind of a standardized way to communicate with each other. I've done a video on MCP, which is um, use the link in the description. But essentially, MCP now you actually have some sort of like other ways to do it. So like Sandesk or Salesforce. So now you're using the Sandesk MCP server and Salesforce MCP server. First will make it way easier now for you to actually integrate directly with something like Sandesk. If you don't know, Sandesk is basically a customer support ticket um, platform that, for example, you can now do it within the agent step. You can now add ticket comments. You can now create a ticket. You can now find a group. You can find the latest comment. You can now find tickets, right, etc. Native to Sandesk, so it makes it even easier to basically uh, integrate directly into Sandesk, right? So, for example, these one. And I highly encourage you guys to kind of explore a little bit um, on the on the settings. Well, actually, no. I have, what is this? I, I I swear I haven't seen this before. Um, oh, you can just oh, it's within integration now. So interesting. Okay, and you can. This is kind of a spoiler, but basically, yeah, with the eleven labs, they can now connect use your own custom voice. But um, so basically, you can now connect to Sendesk with your Sendesk URL, right? So hopefully that helps. Um, so I kind of spoiled it already, but the second thing is voice. So essentially. One of the biggest things they can see, right? If you didn't know, like you can build voice agents within VoiceFlow already. So you can just start a call right out within here. And it's basically currently in beta. But now after this update, which is now actually, it's now out of beta and it basically fixes the latency issues. Now they, they claim that the latency is now sub 500 milliseconds. I've yet to test it, but essentially it's much better because if you have been using VoiceFlow to kind of build this voice agent, it's not quite production ready yet. And one of the reasons why is because of the latency. And now it has fixed the latency issues. So it's so I've yet to try yet, but I really hope that it will make building this production ready agent much easier. Second thing, background noise cancellation. They've used something called CRISP, which is basically a production based noise, noise cancellation algorithm. What I mean by that is that when you're on the voice call with other agents, what tends to happen is if your background is noisy, if you're like on the street, someone is talking over you, it makes the algorithm like just doesn't, it doesn't process the input. So essentially what happened is if you, let's say this is you, you keep talking, right? These are sound waves, by the way, but this is you talking and there's a gap, right? And the AI is supposed to take this input and then process the input. But if there, if your background is noisy, let's say someone over next to you is talking over you in the background noise, the AI would not right now, it will pick up these kind of background noises and take those background noises as inputs, right? But so that makes the AI, first of all, slower, the latency is worse because you're waiting. It basically thinks that you've, you haven't finished talking yet. Essentially, you're, the AI is waiting, 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 waiting for you to finish. But you, you've already finished, right? This is just the background noises. But now with CRISP, which is the noise cancellation algorithm, is that it when you after you finish your your thing, it will no longer pick up these random noises, right? As you can see here, there's zero wavelength. So these wavelengths are the background noises, and after the noise cancellation, there won't be any um, basically background noises. So that makes the quality of the building these voice agents much better. And again, the third thing is custom voice, and you've seen it already. You can basically connect to 11 app to your own custom voice with your own API key, right? So it makes so you can just train your own voice in 11 labs and you can plug it into voice flow. And yeah, there's some other things kind of cover that custom voice, voice services. Now, web event web focus I'm going to talk about is basically, as you can see here, it's very blurry. It's like a screenshot I took during the event. But essentially, what this is, is that if you want the agent to do something after the call, you can then just put your make.com or NAN like, like webhook in here, the URL in here. It would then automatically automatically send a request to that workflow and you can do some actions um, after the call. So that will, that's what we call like after event webhooks. Outbound calling API is already exists. So I'm not gonna like go into it too much. And apparently coming soon is call recordings, which is really nice. Like if you notice other platforms like retail or of Vapi, they've already done. They've already been doing this, so it's great that Voice is now doing a voice recordings, and it's actually making building this voice agents much easier, much more competitive option now. Actually, so that's voice. Okay, and third thing, KV chunking. So now um, the knowledge base, because with now 
the, the update is basically the answer questions more, more accurate with master market key, right? So what I mean by is this. Right now, if you go to knowledge base, and if you were to, let's say, import some PDF, right? Right now, it's you can't control the chunk, right? You can't control how it's chunked. I mean, you can, but the only thing that you can control right now, if you actually go to the docs, which is the voice flow uh, knowledge base upload document, the only thing that you can really control is like the chunk size, right? And that's pretty much it. And also like the tag, I guess, like to create a tag of the document, that's it. But like, there's so many things that I guess it doesn't allow you to do is that, for example, what's the optimal chunk size? Um, what's the kind of, so basically, are there any context with these chunks, et cetera? There's so many things that right now, the voice for knowledge base kind of, is kind of a closed box, like a black box. You don't really know what's happening behind the scene, um, like chunk overlapping, what kind of text splitting. I don't, if it does, does if, it, if any of the things that I said doesn't make sense to you, don't worry. You don't really need to know it, but all you need to be aware is that very soon they will now have added features to knowledge base where for example, markdown conversion for smart chunking will be doing automatically HTML to markdown. So the reason why is that when you upload a document into knowledge base or like a website, you are not supposed to just add the data source URL and just type in the website, right? So let's say apple.com. You're not supposed to do that. I mean, you can, but you're not supposed to. What you're supposed to do is first go to something like Firecrawl, plug that website into Firecrawl, put it into markdown format, and then plug it into data source. The reason why is because markdown format has been proven in research to improve knowledge retrieval accuracy in knowledge-based agents like this one, right? So, but now natively within voice flow, as you can see here, markdown conversion, within voice flow, you can automatically does that. That means you don't need Firecrawl anymore, right? So that, that helps out all. LLM generated question. Well, we use an LLM to generate a question based on the document context and specific chunk and prepare it to the chunk. It enhances retrieval by line chunks with potential user queries. So basically it helps with the whole, again, the whole rack, like again, applications, all of these things are kind of little steps to make it more accurate, right? So it basically now it's trying to create some demo questions, some synthesized question, right? To, to append to the chunk, which helps, I guess. And oh, another thing is that to generate a context summary, um, to a document and chunk context and prepare to each So this again, basically provides a context summary. So it, I guess like it helps, but in the sense that when, within the chunk, because the LLM itself doesn't know what the, like it, it, it doesn't know what the context or the overall picture of what the chunk actually does, right? So now with this like preparing context, again, it helps the accuracy of retrieving the most relevant chunks because now it's taking into account the context of the chunk relevant to the document. Now, LM-based chunking is using LM to determine the optimal chunking. So basically, because right now you, you're just like, you, you're just guessing, right? The max chunk size. But like right now you can use, like not right now, but like in the future, you can use an LM to predict what's the optimal amount of chunk size based on your current situation your unique situation, right? So that's, again, another helpful tool. Last one is LM content summarization. Use LM to summarize and rewrite the content, removing unnecessary information, and focus on the important parts too. So basically this removes the garbage of like, a, if you have a document that has like way too long and has contained a lot of garbage information, it pollutes the quality of the knowledge base. Basically during rack, during your knowledge retrieval, what's gonna happen is, it's gonna, is there's the risk of returning answers that are not relevant to the user's questions. So that helps with that. So again, I don't want to just read to you like all the different, like you, you, you should probably look through the document if you really want to understand it deeply, but all of these basically are part of the general smart chunking that makes knowledge-based retrieval like basically more accurate and you have more control over it. So yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. And by the way, is the last thing I want to touch on is that they're now moving on to the usage-based pricing, meaning that um, right now, because if you're aware, they have different plans, they have pro plan, team plan, right? And you and you get charged by using the L, any steps that involve like AI, but now they're using one gen, one credit system called the force flow credit system, right? So no more added caps. And to be, to be honest, like I still have to look over it because there is a quite nice um, link that you can look.
which I'm going to link in the description. It's like it's by it was written by Jacqueline, one of the developer leads, uh, relationships um, in Voice Flow. So it's got a lot of credits, and so basically, the actions that AI, AI made will consume credit. So it's one centralized credit. I encourage you to look for this. Um, so basically, every message you your agent consumes one credit. Every minute your agent spends on the call consumes ten credits. And of course, like the text to speech usage, you can just kind of follow this formula and LM usage, etc. Right. So highly encourage you to go through this um, to make sure that you're not like spending credits unnecessarily. Make sure like you're optimizing your credit. So again, so you you have lessons of like monitoring your credit usage, so letting blah blah and use credit. So just go over this uh, website. There's voiceful.com slash lessons slash for credits. You can link it in the description. So you can yeah, just have a read through and make sure you're aware of this kind of economy system that voice is using. But yeah, so this is just a really, really quick summary, high level overview of the major updates that I think you guys should be aware of. Um, and yeah, and if you've got any questions, just let me know in the comments. I think I'm, I'm pretty excited. It's getting better and better, especially with voice actually it's getting better. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that voice is you can, they're, in, they're releasing the web chat 3.3, like version three interface. Meaning that, you know, this voice widget that I have here, it can be deployed on the website now. So it's not just like phone call, but you can deploy it on the website as well. So that's it for me today. And yeah, any questions, let me know. Enjoy.